Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Robert Wallace, uh, liaison for the Open Spaces Commission. And I do have Andy Bessler on the telephone here, so he's going to be joining us over the telephone. So it looks like we do meet quorum. Um, so we can kick things off by calling it to order. I'll hand it over to you, Commissioner Wilson. Mr. Wilson, can you hear us? Sorry. I thought I unmuted, but I guess I didn't. No um, sorry about that. All right. I call the regular Open Spaces Commission meeting to order for February 28th, 2022. Um, Robert, can we have a roll call? You bet. I'll start with you, Commissioner Wilson. I'm here. All right. Commissioner <laughs> Andy Bessler. Hello, everyone. I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Jim Burton. Uh, present. Commissioner Mark Loseth. Hey, I'm here. All right. Great to see everybody. And uh, for the record, we have three vacant um, positions currently. So that's everyone. And uh, Vice Mayor Becky Daggett. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. OK, we are yeah. here and we have a quorum. All right, sounds good. So item number three is the approval of the December 6th, 2021 meeting minutes. Um, uh, hopefully we've had, you know, you've had a chance to read the minutes uh, for that meeting. Um, if not, uh, the commissioners, you know, you can take a minute or two to review them as needed. Um, is there any discussion or corrections to the minutes as they are written or anybody need a little bit of time to uh, take a look at them? Not hearing anything or seeing um, anything. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? Yeah, this is Commissioner Loseth. I'd like to make the motion to approve the minutes. Okay, do I have a second? That's Commissioner Burton, I'll second. Andy, I can second. I'm sorry, I, I missed that. Oh, uh, yeah, Commissioner Andy, Burton, I'll second. second. Okay, Commissioner Burton makes a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, minutes are approved as written. All right, number four, um, public participation. Um, <clears throat> at this time, any member of the public may address the commission on any subject that is not scheduled before the commission on this day. The Arizona open meeting law prohibits the commission from discussing or acting on an item which is not listed on the prepared agenda. 
Commission members may, however, respond to criticism made by those addressing the commission, ask staff to review a matter, or ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. To address the commission on an item that is on the agenda, please wait for the chair to call for public comment at the time that the item is heard. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on a subject that's not on the agenda for tonight? Again, not seeing any, I will move to the business items. Uh, first up is the regional plan updates um, to be provided by city staff. This is a informational and a discussion item. Um, Robert, do you wanna start the discussion and maybe introduce who's here from the city staff? Yeah, I believe Sarah Dector is here to join us on that and Mark Lubis, and I will hand it off them to them. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. Thank you. I'm having a little technical challenge, Sarah. Do you have the presentation open or? I'm not able to control it. <laughs> You're on mute. Oh, sorry, I can pull it up quickly. I'm almost there. I'm not able to control it for some reason. Weird. It's not shutting down. <laughs> Share my screen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So we're doing a lot of these uh, with the various commissions. So uh, we're we're taking turns presenting them. So this is my first one I'm doing on the regional plan update all by myself. And then Sarah will join at the end. Next slide, please. So today uh, we're going over the regional plan. It will talk about uh, the existing plan and as well as the update. And then something that we're just trying out is a SWAT effort by commission members to talk through strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Next slide. So when we're talking about a regional plan, there is a hierarchy of planning documents. So at the top is the regional plan. It has a lot of implement implement implications as we go down through planning efforts with such things as neighborhood specific plans and then ultimately uh, implementing those actions that were covered in the regional plan. Next please. Why is it a regional plan? It's because it includes the city and the county. It, for the city it serves as a general plan and it must be voted upon by the citizens and it supports land decisions uh, such as the water supply, transportation plan, all inclusive of those efforts that are extremely important to the city. County, it's implemented in the county comprehensive plan. It is adopted by the Board of Supervisors and it provides a map of areas for further plan efforts in the county. Next, please. What did the public talk about in the initial plan? Uh, they wanted to hold the government accountable for public uh, policy outcomes and goals. It's a guide for physical and economic development within the city and county. It establishes priorities for the public actions that are taken. Uh, the direction is uh, complementary uh, to private decisions and it encourages predictable decision making. Next, please. The past or current regional plan 
uh, lots of goals, lots of policies. Uh, it generalizes land use in maps, uh, and it clearly identifies activity centers, which is the basis for a lot of decision making. Uh, very important as far as transportation modeling goes, predicting uh, how to uh, keep growth in control and tie that into transportation. Huge emphasis on multimodal transportation, so vehicles, pedestrian, bikes. And again, we talked about water supply and making sure we have adequate water for our community. Next, please. So the vision in 2030 for the regional plan, um, maintain a healthy system of open land supporting the natural environment and our quality of life through the stewardship by regional stakeholders. Uh, the first goal is uh, quite hard to do, but we keep it in our mind of how we're considering all these aspects of natural areas, wildlife corridors, habitat, trails, access to land, greenways, natural environment, uh, cultural heritage, my world, and uh, the ecosystem health. So those are huge goals. Uh, we think about them every day. Uh, to do this in a comprehensive way, it's, it's quite difficult, but this is kind of the game that uh, your board is in. Next, please. Again, the complexity of a regional plan, talking about uh, centers of activity, how things are currently zoned and classified, uh, historic districts, all those things come together in a regional plan and work with each other as far as decisions are made. Next, please. This is a uh, Another map that kind of is a comprehensive way of looking at resources that are in the area. Those that are protected, uh, connected. We talk about those spaces all the time. How do we make a healthy community? How do we uh, make a healthy region and tie everything together? Next, please. Additional policies. Establish a conservation land system supported by stakeholders, Fed, state, city, county, nonprofits, interested citizens. So the inventory, knowing what we have, is very important. Um, how we manage those resources, important as well. How do you acquire them, conserve them, protect them, and provide long-term management? Always a difficult thing of uh, protecting private property rights, uh, preserving nature and open lands uh, under the general guidance of the Flagstaff area, open space and greenway plan and the uh, mapping that's included with that. Next slide, please. Policies. Uh, Use of open space, natural environment, buffer zones to protect scenic views and cultural resources. Separate uh, desperate, dis disparate uses and separate private development from public land, scenic byways and wildlife habitat. Use open space as an opportunity for non motorized activity to interact with nature, enjoy view, quiet. And another policy, integrate open space qualities into the built environment. Next slide, please. So we have specific plans, uh, Flagstaff Open Space Greenway Plan, and uh, also looking at uh, actual designated open space management plans. Next, please. Uh, we are in phase one of the level of public participation, we are reaching out to all citizen boards, which you're involved in. Our whole effort is to collaborate with all these groups. And since it is a regional plan, it is city and county working together. So 
we want to empower everyone to participate. So we're just getting organized. Uh, we will be analyzing and we'll be moving through uh, this effort. Um, I'm involved in uh, doing something kind of unique with a artist that we have under contract where we're creating art and activities to get people excited, particularly young people that will be impacted by this regional planning effort in an artistic way. So that's kind of a fun thing we're thinking about doing. Phase two, we look at vision goals, the process. All of this is kind of a continuous loop type of process. Phase three is where we're actually creating something that we can look at draft plans. And then ultimately uh, the council uh, and the county do the adoption of the regional plan. Next, please. Again, it's complicated. It's collaborative. There's areas that you look at. You look at old plans, you look at new, you look at community input, you analyze the data, uh, you look at the community vision and the values and how we work together as a government. Next, please. Back to the complexity of things. Uh, there's a lot of data to analyze, very specific uh, data that is looked at. Um, looking at demographics, transportation, energy, heritage preservation, natural resources, climate, housing, all those things come together in a regional plan. So we're looking ultimately way into the future, testing potential scenarios along the way. It's a very flexible moving target right at this time. Again, it's extremely important that we get early input on the direction for the regional plan. Next slide, please. So I think people are aware of some of the emerging issues, certainly uh, carbon neutrality and looking at how we accomplish that is going to be extremely important. Uh, we have land development going on, we have economic development, and we certainly have a housing crisis. Uh, another thing as planners that we're very much aware of is equity and inclusion with our decisions that are made and uh, new housing affordability strategies. Um, open space has a lot to do with public health, so access to food, uh, access to resources, access to systems and capabilities. Uh, as we know, we've been through this uh, COVID crisis. You know, how do we look to the future if things like this happen again? Uh, technology is going to change quickly. It's certainly exponential. So what opportunities are there there? Um, broadband, having everybody access to that certainly has been a, the case with uh, COVID as well and people working remote and we'll see how that technology changes and where we're living right now and how we'll live in the future. Next slide please. So we're going to try something new here with Sarah and this is for the Commission members only and I think it will be a fun opportunity to get some input from you. Thank you, Mark. Um, um, so we this is the first of what the regional plan team likes to call our tour day commissions, which I know Martin will appreciate my bicycle illusion there. Um, and at each of these commissions, we're meeting with over 20 of them in the next two months. We want to perform a consistent way of getting your commission feedback across all these diverse commissions that we are visiting because we realize you're spending your time as volunteers for the city or the county or whatever body that you're a part of that we're visiting with um, to understand the in-depth issues around the topic that a commission looks at. So in this case, you're the Open Space Commission. And we want to know how the plan in relate that we are in the process of working to update can relate to open space better than it does right now. So we're going to take you through a SWOT analysis. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
And in the chat, you're going to see there's an invitation and I asked that only the commissioners click this. Um, and I think that I sent Robert and Marion um, the link to send to Andy because I realized Andy Bressler's on the phone and not with us. Um, but if you click on that link and you log in, you're going to land on a website that will start to take us through this process. And I'm going to show you how in just a second. But I want to go over the questions we're asking you as commissioners give us feedback on. So you've seen all the policy content of the regional plan in relation to open space as part of this presentation. What do you think the strengths are of those policies? What are their weaknesses? And then we'll ask you to flip your mind into what's ahead of us. So what opportunities do we have as we are about to engage on revising this plan? What, and maybe even ones that didn't exist in 2013, 2012, when we were doing this exercise the first time. And then a threat, what could negatively impact the creation or implementation of an updated plan? What are the rocks in the road ahead of us? So if you will please click on the link in the chat, um, or Robert and Marion, if you will please send it to Andy, I will switch what I'm presenting here, and I'll show you what the SWOT analysis looks like. Get some mix around here. I can see, and everyone's about to see that you've joined or not, so this is a, I'm buying you time to get on. Um, and it should be really easy. You should just be able to put in your email and hop onto this platform. So this is what our digital whiteboard looks like. Can everybody see it? And I'm waiting for you here. So as you, oh, there's Becky and Mark. There we go. Um, so as you log in, you'll be able to start filling out your, your choices here. So strengths go in the, we, the green quadrant. Um, the blue quadrant is for weaknesses, the orange for opportunities, and the red for threats. So you should be able to, and I'll show you how, just go click on the space at the top and enter whatever it is you want. Um, if once you've entered something, um, so I'll offer one of mine, uh, I'll put this as a weakness over here. Um, and I'm only offering this to show you how it works. So I enter that language and I click this. I can then go back and open it up and you can comment on other people's uh, additions to this platform. And you can also add an image if you're really excited about visual things or something visually pops into your mind as a strength or a weakness. Um, so go ahead, just start entering whatever it is that pops to your mind having seen the material. And I, of course, can pull it back up if needed. Sorry. Sarah, this is Robert. I just had a quick question um, for Andy. How, how long does the commissioners have to provide a response? Is this something that we just have to do within the next day or that Andy could maybe get back to it at a, in a late, later time? Well, since it's, in a it's a quorum, it has to be done in this meeting unless you would like to advertise a, quor a potential quorum of the commission outside the timing of this meeting. Okay, thank you, sir. And the attorneys just gave me a little applause probably somewhere because I remembered how this works. <laughs> this is Andy, I'm, I'm driving up from Phoenix, so I'm unable to do that on the computer right now. Sorry about that. But I'll just give my proxy to the other commissioners to provide their input. Yeah, and Andy, if you, if you had a... If you had some input that you wanted me to verbally, you wanted to say something verbally, I think that there's an opportunity for that. Um, yeah, Robert know... could log in and you could just talk while we're entering stuff if you wanted. Okay, thanks. Thank so, Robert, do you want to log in as the, as the surrogate Andy? And we can just have, we can talk about these while you're entering them. Yep, sounds good. You guys go ahead and start and I'll log on. Great. For some, for some, this is Mike. Um, for some reason, my link is not coming up on my computer. It just keeps saying it's validating. Uh, I can also email this to you. Uh, 
um, if you want to put your email in the chat. Okay, I can do that. Hopefully that will let us get you into this platform. You guys are the first commission to test the platform with us, so you get to do all the guinea pig stuff of just, hello, did this work? Can you get on? We tested it ahead of time, but. Um, yeah, it's probably something with my computer. Pop up blocker or something. Yeah, let's see if getting the link over an email is, is better. All right, let me. Okay, I sent it in chat. I'll open my email. There it goes. So the reason we're asking for the input this way and not in our traditional open ended sense is that we really want you to take some time to evaluate how the plan has served you. Um, how the plan could serve better. Um, there's much to be said for the fact that open space was very central um, and there's very few policies about it, but it was included in that um, map that Mark showed that showed the future land uses which is called the future growth illustration. You can see there's areas of green identified. Um, there's there's Mark, he got on, yay. Um, I'm sorry, Mike got on right now. So, so all those pieces, how do we make that better? How do we you know, take it to the vision that this commission has for open space in the city of Flagstaff and help it be a document that helps you achieve that? Jim, I can see you're on, but you haven't entered any ideas. Are you having any issues getting into the platform? Uh, no, I'm I'm typing right now. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking at the regional plan. Perfect. So there's lots of topping typing going on. Mark, you looks like you've kind of wrapped up your ideas. Do you want to talk about any of them? I guess they'd be a little bit more generalized comments. Um, I really haven't taken into consideration any specifics of the plan, um, but more these are just really, really general. Is that okay, Sarah, or do you want more specifics? I want as specific as you feel you can be. This is gotcha. really your opportunity to help set the scope of the regional plan update. So if there are specifics, it's a good time to get them in front of the team. Probably by the next time we come back to this commission, let me just put this in a context, we'll have like partial drafts or feedback from the public or things to really share with you about what direction the process and the public engagement is taking the plan and, and also all the work that we're doing in terms of um, in terms of our participation in um, data and analysis and modeling, and so this is kind of that nascent place where the ideas of this commission can really take hold about what's important to you as we work through this process. Because there will be trade-offs. There will come a point where we won't all get everything we want, but this is the time where we can all dream of everything we want and um, put those opportunities and constraints in front of the commission and in front of staff so that we walk forward with eyes open for these.
but I can see like one of the weaknesses somebody put is people want things now and the plan is big and visionary and it doesn't offer implementation or timelines. It doesn't. It gives you a big framework to look at goals in the very long run. Um, but that also gives you a long range look. It's important to remember that the general plan is where we go when there's a zoning case. So when there's a piece of land that comes in for a rezoning, if there is no open space displayed on that property, if it's shown as suburban or it's shown as you know an urban future area for the city, that tells us a lot about the kind of development we're gonna see there. And we know that not every piece of vacant land can be open space. So seeing the highest priority lands um, in the regional plan is very, very, very important. It's really one of your key tools to ensure preservation of open spaces that have the highest values for the public and for natural resources. I know folks are still typing, but I'll just go start with the strengths and you can keep working while I'm while I am magnifying things. So what we've seen so far in strengths is that the document has informational graphics and mapping. It's good, full of good aspirational ideas. Um, it shows a better connected foot system and more passive transportation opportunities. And then in the weakness category, it lasts specifics in order to implement um, the shared community values to drive vision and goals. So someone explain who, I don't know who this one is, I can look, but if you want to speak up, why is that a weakness? This is Jim Burton. Uh, looking at strategic plans, uh, most strategic plans start with a, um, a shared set of values. Um, and so a critical component um, so that you can base um, all future you know, decisions and uh, the path forward, the vision um, on those values. So um, is a, you know, I saw some, uh, some guiding principles in there, which um, are kind of almost, but not really. But I think um, shared community uh, values is really important to understand what's the community values and really a drive you know what what it truly is that vision of the community and what is um you know and then how do we formulate goals to you know both meet the vision within the values i just added some comments under that so that when i came back to this comment later i recognize what you were saying here um yeah we know that I yeah know. no problem i'm a <laughs> I'm a graduate student right now in risk management and strategic planning. And uh, yeah, that's one of the one of the core pieces of the puzzle. Absolutely. Um, I know what I meant by the conservation land. OK, opportunities. Um, so uh, one of the opportunities is a greater emphasis on how to get to our goals. Who's with that? Does anybody want to expound upon that? I just, um, this is my, uh, Wilson, um, I, I just feel like there's a lot of good ideas within the plan, but maybe I'm not seeing it, but I just feel that there's not a lot of specifics, uh, uh, you know, of how to get to those goals. You know, they're, they're really good ideas, and I think, um, you know, they should be part of the plan, but I just have a feeling looking at some of that, that, that there's not a way to get there. There's not really a, a roadmap and, and that may be just me looking at it. I don't know. Great. There actually was a whole document of implementation strategies for the regional plan that council at the time had reviewed and chosen not to adopt. And so they removed them from the plan. So that's sort of how we ended up where we are with that is council said, we don't like, we don't want those strategies. We want way more flexibility. Take those out of the plan. Is there okay. any chance of <laughs> putting them back into the new one? This is the chance to do that is to tell council. We don't, we don't think the plan was easily implemented without strategies. 
Yeah, I probably I, I will say, you know, you don't want to list everything you expect to do as a entire city. Right. Right. That's not a reasonable way to set priorities because that list will be obsolete within a year. Right. Um, and but how do you make trade offs is definitely a part, I think, of the regional plan that's been a lot much discussed in the last few months. Um, we also have we are having active public transportation right now, but roads and infrastructure we're shifting in our transportation focus. Do you mean that in a way that um, it benefits open space and makes it a bigger part of the conversation? Same with the infrastructure one. Is that where you guys are thinking or you're just thinking over overall? What might change in the plan? Uh, I, I made that comment. This is uh, Mark Loseth. I it just seems like Flagstaff's having a moment right now. Uh, with the public conversations that are going on, and there's potential to take advantage of that um, and reflect a lot of the things that we're hearing in the community in the plan. Do you mean that in particular related to open space or just in general? It, this, it would be more of a general thing about how we're looking at the way development is happening in Flagstaff and definitely how it's related to um, like foot trails and like passive transportation, but it's I guess meant a little bit more broad because it seems like people are having conversations that uh, weren't common a year ago or more. So there's one added here, use of enterprise risk management to identify the risks that could prevent goals from not being achieved as an opportunity. What kind of opportunities do you see? Like what could enterprise, I'm not familiar with that, so what can enterprise risk management offer the process, Jim? Uh, so kind of a, a further evolution of a, a, strategic, a strategic plan is, um, is then going off your strategic plan to implement enterprise risk management, which is essentially looking at uh, the possible risks that are out there um, that can prevent you from uh, achieving objectives and goals and and manage those and um you know those can be things as you know as, as simple as um you know political risks to um economic risks to to a number of, of different risks that are out there but really understanding you know what potential risks can impact your goals and objectives um and being able to strategize and prioritize um, those along with being able to manage them uh, appropriately so you can, you know, prevent uh, impact to your objectives and goals. Did I capture that? Well, I was kind of using my own words while listening so that I'm reflecting on it, but the plan could be a basis for enterprise risk management and could be used to assess the plan content once it's drafted. What risks can impact, what risks can impact goals and objectives could be used to help prioritize them? Yeah. Yep, and, and manage the potential risk to not achieving them. Yep. They're great comments. I'm always I'm I go in here and make sure they're kind of more in depth for our understanding. I lost all that. I'm sorry, Jim. Would you mind going back in and adding to the description right here of this one for me? You should be able to get back to this comment and click on it. I tr I forgot to hit the check yep. mark. There's my error. Yeah, let me see here. But you could just go to description and add and add a bunch of stuff right there. I will not. Add Sounds it. good. Thank I'm you. bouncing back and forth on my on my iPhone. <laughs> That's all right. This is the fun part. Okay, so last part of the SWAT is um, threat. So. The changes in economic conditions could be a threat. We've seen quite a few of those in the last 10 years. That's certainly one that's on our mind um, as a team is what kind of macro trends in the in the economy, in the world economy, in the national economy could come to roost for us and what they could mean. Um, future technology developments with modes of transportation. Um, does anybody want to, I know Jim, I'm sorry, Jim, you're typing, but I'll, I'll come back to that one. Um, continued pressure on funding to implement the plan. Uh, Mike, do you want to expound on that one a little? Well, it, it kind of dovetails, I guess, with the first one about the economic conditions. 
um, you know, you know, you you have these ideas and and plans, but they all ultimately cost something. And you know, I just feel that we that there it could be a threat to you know implement implementing a lot of the aspects of the plan if you know there's pressure on funding which there always is <laughs> so i just feel that as a as a threat thank you and you know specifically to open space but to all aspects of the plan as well yes land costs money yep <laughs> and lately it costs a lot more money i agree um, and so then road and housing development pressures taking priority over passive transportation. Mark, do you wanna chime in on that? That was your comment, it looks like. Commissioner Loisel. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's just, it's a hot topic right now. And it seems to me like as the conversation changes, priorities can shift fairly quickly. And a lot of this, you know, when we're talking about out open space, passive transportation opportunities, you know, foot trails, bike paths, they often lose their emphasis quicker than roads or student housing or, you know, whatever is in the public conversation at the time. So the shifting, the shifting emphasis often uh, doesn't allow, you know, the things that the open space commission deals with uh, to kind of keep their their priorities elevated in the public conversation. Okay. Robert, um, you just typed that uh, uh, Commissioner Bressler had some things to add. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, he had two questions while you guys were chatting. Uh, one, he'd like to ask for an extension so he could be a better participant in the brainstorming session here. So maybe we can put that on the next agenda if that's if that's okay with you as far as like sharing this link again. And uh, second, he had a question. Uh, our next item on the agenda has to do with open space easements. And he was wondering if easements are typically addressed in a regional plan, if that's a land use that's specific enough, or if that's like it, it, stand, uh, it stands on its own. And I'll let Andy jump in there in case he wants to add more clarification. Sure. Yeah, Robert, it was just related to open space lands and those easements that cross them. I'm, just, I'm not sure if it's in there or not. So thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Um, so I guess it depends on the kind of easement. I mean, there are certainly open spaces identified uh, or in the case of our current plan, it, it, it kind of prioritizes certain kinds of natural resources. Core protection is open space, but doesn't go so far in a plan that's this broad, a general plan, to talk about the specifics of how you acquire the land. That's really always sort of outside the scope of a general plan. But it says what kind of land you would like to acquire. And it could also say like we prefer not having easements or we like easements or there's certain kind of instruments that are preferred. Um, that is definitely something that it can do um, when it talks about strategies, but it can't say like this one, we're going to get an easement that gets left up to real estate and Robert and Martin as they are working together to try and bring together a negotiated agreement with property owners when we're looking to acquire open space. Did that answer your question? I believe that did. Yeah, if if and he has further questions, I'll I'll let him speak. No, I'm good. Thanks, Robert. Great. Yep, I can definitely um, give you the opportunity if you want me to come back next month and you can keep adding to this um, for the next month if you'd like. Um, what if if that's the case and that's what you want to do, Robert? What we would do next month is we would also, you'll be asked to rate these. So you'll score everything that people have put on the list. So you can score how important it is. So the question here is from one to 10, how important are the things that you've put here in the SWOT analysis? Um, so we're, ask, we're gonna ask you to prioritize them. I, if I leave this open or I close it and then reopen it for your next meeting, um, you'll be able to keep rating and adding. 
it doesn't like shut off the previous one by going here. So if you'd like to go ahead and rate now, you can go ahead and do that. Just run through each of these and put your ratings on them. And it'll kind of start to show up, but we can fit, we can partially finish this task and come back and do it again. That'd be great, Sarah. I really appreciate that. I'm sure the commissioners would appreciate that. I do specifically appreciate that. Thanks, Sarah. Yes. No problem. Just please remember not to do it between meetings because this is an, we have basically created an electronic quorum. And so you can only do this when you are in quorum now that we've started. So that was a good start to the conversation since um, we want to put a pin in this one and come back to it in another meeting so you have more time to participate. Um, I will go ahead and see if you have any other questions for Mark and I and wrap up. Anyone from the commission have any other questions or comments? You know, uh, I would just add that um, that's pretty good practice. I think that was a great tool. Yeah, thank you. I'd love your feedback on the tool. You're the first people it's been rolled out to. So um, uh, that's a fantastic facilitate the conversation. I'd love that feedback. Yeah, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats is a is a is a very, very great way to go through um, strategic planning The you know, when, understand that um, another little piece that probably wouldn't be appropriate for the commissions or whatnot but maybe the smaller group would just uh, be looking at knowns and unknowns and then you know those know those things that you know that's fantastic but it's you know the the unknowns are things that you need to continue to peel the layers back to make them you know more known but uh that's that's the other piece to the to the SWAT there. I, I use it on incident management teams all the time. It's a fantastic tool. Great. If you also, if any commissioners have individual comments that you would like to email to me, um, or you can email them to Robert and he can pass them to me, um, feel free to do so at any time during the next three years, essentially, related to the regional plan and this process. So um, the door is now open. Except don't work on your digital whiteboard unless you're in a quorum. Sound, sounds good. And I, I just want to echo what was just said. I think this is a, a great tool. I mean, one of my questions that I had was, you know, uh, you know, what worked and what didn't work in the, the last plan and, and, uh, you know, lessons learned. And I think this is a great way to, to, uh, get it out in the, you know, out in the open and, um, and in a lot more detail than what I had in mind. So I appreciate it. Well, thank you all for your time tonight. And I guess we'll be agendized next month and we'll look forward to continuing the conversation. All right, thank you. Thank you both Sarah and Mark, appreciate it. All right. Let me get back to my other screen here. All right, so I guess that takes care of uh, 5A and 5B, uh, the open space easements, which um, looks like Bryce Cody is going to make a presentation on this. Um, the requested action on this item is uh, also just informational and a discussion. Um, Robert or Bryce, do you want to take this? Sounds good. Good evening, everyone. Bryce Doty, I'm the real estate manager. Um, I think I've been available or presented um, in some capacity over the past year, but uh, this is this is a short presentation, really from uh, from a request from Robert, really to understand what easements are burdening open space to get a sense of what's uh, what's underneath the ground and whether there are any opportunities to do any restoration or amending the easements. And so this is kind of an update of, of the progress we've made off that request. Um, we've really focused our efforts on the four main open space areas, Schultz Creek, um, Observatory Mesa, 
uh, McMillan Mesa, and Picture Canyon. So what we've done on the real estate section with uh, a lot of just uh, pure data entry help um, and slugging along from Carmen Fryer, the real estate specialist, and she's here tonight, is pull up all the title documents that we have from um, title reports that we have on these lands. So whenever these were acquired, we received title reports. Um, on a number of occasions, we've, we've had title reports done and updated from those. And what those really reflect are the encumbrances on the properties. And really, we only know what's in the county records. So those title reports are only going to re reflect what's in the county records. They also reflect a lot of stuff that's not just easements. So already there's a lot of weeding out that you got to do. You got to get rid of all the ordinances that don't apply, but you have to leave the ordinance that, ordinances that do apply. Um, so it's just kind of been a lot of a, a data data entry and kind of validation um, issue that we've been going through. And then so we've we kind of cobbled together from existing title reports we've had. And then for Picture Canyon Observatory Mesa, those were purchased from the state and the state kept their own records. And some of those are recorded, some of them aren't with the county records. So it's really just a, a couple sources, um, but it, it really is a lot of data and a lot of easements that we're looking at. And so this is just a reflection of uh, a snippet of these, the spreadsheet, it glorified, uh, it's not really a database, it's just a, spread, a spreadsheet at this uh, point of where we're at. So we, from all of those documents, we've, re we've registered 93 easements on here. Um, 53 of those easements we've taken a look at and I've actually linked um, so I can send out this spreadsheet. Right now, it's not finished, but um, on this recording number, right away number, a lot of 53 of these documents are leaked. So you push it and uh, the document pops up. And, and then uh, so it's really, you know, it's getting closer to being being something that we can use. Um, not all of the information is is uh, represented right now. So we just haven't combed through all of these easements to make sure that, uh, you know, just to enter in the data of who gave this, what the date is, what the size of it is. And then we still need to, all the data, raw data that we do have on here, we still need to scrub that and, uh, and kind of just clean up this database. So that's where we're at in terms of giving you a, a good understanding of what's, what easements burden the open space. The, uh, but what I've kind of found right here is um, preliminary opportunities to amend these easements. Um, you know, it's pretty limited from the legal language of these. A lot, most of these are perpetual. Um, the majority of the ones that are not perpetual were entered into from on the state land on behalf of the city for the utilities. Um, and so that's not really quite the, the issue that we have, or it's not, it's not so much of a concern. Um, but to me, I guess what I find is the opportunity is that the, the holders of these easements, these are all community partners. And so if we do have some, depending on what we kind of want to do with these, they might not be willing to entertain amending those easements. They might be. But, uh, you know, in terms of restoring lands or trying to create some kind of best practices for, for what happens on these easements when they are on open space, I think we've there's enormous opportunity for you know positive goodwill on both sides for all the partners um, once once we kind of understand what kind of outcome we want from uh, how these easements uh, are are treated. So that and then really we've got a lot of the easements that are owned by the city or our public utility easements. Those are mapped on the citywide GIS. But we don't have all those other third party easements that were taken um, from other people's names. And so that's kind of where we're at um, from that. Looking at some of the language, these are just a couple snippets. You know, not much has changed in terms of um, an evolution from, from uh, putting in some restoration or a duty to restore these lands. Really, the whenever easements were granted, the the holder of that easement has those rights, and we can't really interfere on the surface to uh, to infringe on those rights. And that's really kind of stayed constant um, throughout the time. And just to kind of put this in perspective, through the development process, when the city receives a dedication for a public utility easement or water on a new building or something like that. Um, we also ask the same thing because we don't want to spend 
uh, taxpayer dollars to repair, you know, repair the the landscaping on something if the water line breaks because we want to we want to put that on the grant tour because they're asking for this. And this is a different situation though with the open space because we are the owner and I think we there is some opportunities going forward to think of some restoration language that could still allow the uh, the easement holders the ability to do what they need to do in there, but uh, to put some kind of duty to restore in there that that would be reasonable. And I think there's a lot of room there. Um, just real quick, here's just kind of some examples of what is going on our GIS and where we where we ultimately need to go to. I'm counting 22 easements on Picture Canyon. I've seen an Alta survey on this. Um, there's a lot out here. Um, when you when you put our easement filter on to our GIS, we've got one, two of them. So we've got got some work to do to map that out. Observatory Mesa, same. We've only got one reflected in the database. Um, you know, once we kind of clean this up, there is a non-perpetual easement um, for the gas light on there that appears to expire in 2042. So there might be room to renegotiate that to, in to encourage some more um, restoration. Um, Schultz Pass, same. There's just not a lot showing up on our database. And then McMillan Mesa is the, because, you know, with all the development around it, it's, it's showing much better. So we're reflecting a lot more on here. Certainly not 54 easements that are affecting this, but uh, at least we have some semblance of, of what's burdening this land. Um, and that's really kind of the challenge with this exercise is to match up what we're seeing in the records and then get that map so that at least we have an understanding of what's really, a, what's really there. Um, so to me, the next steps of this exercise is to complete this database and Part of the uh, the challenge with that is really just uh, it is labor intensive. Um, it is competing with other real estate priorities, and so it's kind of more of a um, we get to it when we get to it. And so I think a brief discussion tonight about how you know contemplated uh, intended uses for this could could help us uh, kind of understand better what information we need to capture so that we can give you a good product that uh, that is useful. Um, once we have that, I would like to continue on that exercise to get all those easements mapped onto the city GIS. And that's really just to, I'm a visual person, um, call outs on a legal description are, are tough to really understand. Um, and so I think once we have that, we can have a better idea of, uh, you know, kind of complete this exercise. Um, to me, um, I think we need to start having those conversations with uh, community partners. So those holders of the easements, and that might just be, um, you know, a follow-up meeting at an open space commission where we give you a bit more once we've kind of delved into this data, or if we've received some kind of, um, uh, you know, information from from people that, we, you know, which which easements are most important, which ones are torn up that need restoration, and so that we can start having those conversations with our community partners. Um, that's kind of, I, I envision trying to get you the data that you need so that we can have that discussion so that we can start making those conversations. And then third, or finally, is just, uh, you know, moving forward. Um, I know it's very difficult for some of those uh, protected lands to even put easements on there um, without kind of voter referendums or voter action. And that's for those ones that were um, that were acquired through uh, propositions. But for other ones where we are considering easements, I think it's it makes sense to develop some some clauses um, for for future easements, uh, for future requests so that we are protected and there is an understanding of uh, of how to restore these areas um, when easements are on open space. so that's that's really all I have. I'm open to to any questions or kind of have a discussion about this, try to understand better what the commission um, would find helpful when talking about easements on our, on the property. And that's, I'll turn it over to Robert or to the commissioners for any questions. Robert, do you have anything to, to add before the, the commission? 
Oxford. No, I really appreciate Bryce and Carmen's time that they put into this. I think they've been working really hard on this. And so, uh, yeah, it would be great to have some of the commissioners feedback about what they think. Uh, anybody want to make any comments? I have a comment. This is Commissioner Losek. Um, when you're talking about the easements that you don't have uh, currently in your GIS database, is it easy to tell which ones are going to be more disturbing um, for an open space pro property than another one? Like if there's a if there's pipelines that you're not aware of, you know, we have this underground issue that might cause um, ground disturbance at some point, and maybe significant ground disturbance. And maybe another easement isn't so much of a concern and not something that you would need to focus a lot of efforts tracking down? You know, my kind of thinking through that was really just the to high grade them based off of the easement acres or e e size of the disturbance. So, you know, in, in Picture Canyon, there's that giant uh, giant pipeline passing through there. Um, you know, that's that's massive. It's what, you know, 70 feet wide, I think, uh, and it just goes through the entire piece. So that's probably, you know, this uh, 13 acres kind of thing. So so kind of just giving you, once we kind of have all this data in the in the spreadsheet, um, at least starting there is, was my first thought. Anyone else? Uh, a question? I know uh, this is Andy. Robert had uh, been in touch about one of the easements up on McMillan Mesa that is directly uh, south of the veterans' home, and there's a, you know, there's a road essentially that's been created that's not directly under the easement, but it kind of winds in and out of it because Robert said that the easement is directly under the power line, but the road kind of curves in and out. Kind of curious how to resolve that if we can. That. Um, I'm happy to pull that one up. Robert, um, do you have any context for me? I think the easement that Commissioner Besser is speaking about is directly south of the veterans' property coming in from Gemini. It's a, a public utility easement. It's not specific to any one one uh one business um and it, it just kind of follows the fence line of the veterans home and, and what commissioner besser was saying is i do think is true and i think that public utility is directly underneath the power lines but there is a there's a, essentially a drive in driving area that folks have been using rather than driving directly under the utility so and and yeah i'm I think we have exchanged some emails on this one, Robert, and I think we're looking at it right here. Yeah, so that's the, the easement. So we just have some people off off easement, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, we can uh, have this spreadsheet up and running so that we can easily find these things, and uh, and can find them linked to to a GIS pretty easily, so we can understand exactly what you know how wide these are and what rights exist and if there is ingress and egress or if it's really just for power lines yeah it seems to me like it might like an above ground infrastructure and below ground infrastructure for the easements might be different so if there's a pipeline underneath the ground maybe we have to big dig that pipeline up but this road to access the power lines um does have significant impact on the open space because of the ingress and egress um and i'm wondering if there's a way to kind of view what types of easements there are as far as above ground and below ground and kind of be able to determine you know what the potential restoration needs would be for open space moving forward um, cause I'm thinking like anytime there's power lines out in the woods or anywhere, there's going to be a road to access those power lines. There's always going to be an inherent impact, even though the poles themselves don't take up that much space in the ground itself. Um, Bryce, do you see a way of, of, I don't know, maybe creating a lens to kind of view how, um, disturbance and potential restoration needs are based on above ground and below ground? 
I, I think you, you're you onto something there for more fields for us to add to this is to just kind of capture that. We are capturing the type of easement so that you know, there's yeah. no, um, it's, it's a good question, you know, um, in dealing with, with a, APS, um, you know, power lines, we don't like trees biome. And, and so that's just a constant battle with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, not only on open space, just on all city properties, is we're constantly getting, hey, we've, we've got to take this thing out. We've got to do this. And that's just for safety concerns. And so, you know, um, abilities to do that are always limited. And then they're always going to assert the right that, you know, if we've got that power line there, um, we, we need to be able to access it. And uh, and I know Robert and I have kind of gone gone back and forth with them just on this this piece over here by the substation. Um, and really that, you know, it makes sense. Um, they're not going to build a, build a road on something like this where the terrain doesn't, you know, warrant it. But, uh, but if it is above ground, even though, you know, it's not a formal ingress egress, but they still have to have access to it. So, so it's going to, it could be challenging to, to filter out appropriately when even a lot of those easements are still going to at least allow them access to the, to the easement. If that makes sense, yeah. No, that definitely makes sense to me. That is kind of what I was expecting you to say, so I, I appreciate that. So is there anyone else with comments or questions? Brian, right, if you don't mind, I'd just like to kind of... Um, and make sure I understand, you know, that it is possible to revise um, easements um, to include additional language, you know, for conservation or weed management. So is my understanding correct that that is possible to do? My, you know, in terms of our legal ability to amend those leases, mm -hmm. um, those those rights have already been given, but we're working with community partners. So I think um, it's really just going to become a conversation with them to identify those needs and maybe to to understand where we most want to focus those efforts and and try to figure out some type of management plan with them. And I think that's our first step. Um, but you know, I think it is important to note that for these easements, you know, those those were given perpetually for these uses. As long as they're still using them for those uses, um, we have we have little leverage to really say, well, now you got to do this. Um, so there, and and that's just kind of where it, right. um, so it, it can yeah. be revised, but they would have to agree. Correct. Okay. And would it be, you know, appropriate for the commission um, to make any recommendations um, on revising an easement, and if it is how would we go about doing it i think it's i think it's um appropriate and i think that should be a, a good goal is to kind of come up with a, a list of what what's important to the commission to protect so that we can have those conversations and it, it could be um me giving you the right information here once i have kind of a finalized document so that you can do some of that analysis and figure out what's important, or maybe you already know, um, and it's just we need to set up some some meetings um, with our community partners to discuss. And of course, one of those community partners, um, there's a lot of city utilities in here too. So there's already avenues to kind of understand what, um, you know, maybe the, the process is to take this through some of the uh, interdivisional staff and, and try to come up with what might work for maintenance and responsibilities and restoration on, on open space when it is a, a city owned public utility that's in the ground and, and see kind of go through that process through the city and then maybe take that to, uh, to other uh, stakeholders. Okay. Thank you. Any, anyone else have uh, anything they want to talk about? Uh, on the uh, easement. That sounds good to me. Thanks for the update and uh, being on the call. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Very informative. Um, 
I guess we will move on down to open space bond priorities. Um, this one is uh, item is for information. It's an informational item, uh, discussion, and a decision. And Martin and Robert. Hey, good evening, everyone. Yeah, I can um, start us off here. So I'll just kind of remind the commission that uh, in the in prior meetings from from last year, the commission discussed a little bit about the 2004 bond fund priorities, and uh, we've already achieved quite a bit. That's how Picture Canyon and Observatory Mesa were purchased. Those bond funds were used for leverage for a grant application, a growing smarter grant um, through the state of Arizona. And so both of those properties were secured as open space for, for the community. And uh, the original bond was for both uh, open space and FOOTS acquisitions. And just recently, the commission was invited to uh, look at open space priorities to potentially use some of those additional funds for an open space acquisition, which you've reviewed uh, in months prior. And uh, some of that, those funds were also set aside for achieving FOOTS initiatives, which Martin Ince is going to talk a little bit about us about this evening and um, sharing with you a little bit about the necessity of updating the ordinance that was uh, first um, approved with that 2004 bond funds to be able to proceed with both FOOTS and these new open space priorities that the Commission has identified in the past. So with that, I'll go ahead and I hand it over to Martin um, to jump in there. OK, thanks, Robert. Uh, good afternoon, Commission members. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. It wouldn't be an open space commission meeting without a map, would it? <laughs> Eventually, so as as Robert as Robert described, we are we are developing uh, what is essentially a, an acquisition plan uh, for the remaining funds available from the 2004 neighborhood and open space bond. And just real quickly by way of history, Robert gave you some of it, uh, but there was originally 7.6 million dollars approved by voters back in 2004. Uh, for both neighborhood open space and for FOOTS acquisition. And the, and the FOOTS acquisition was intended to support uh, completion of FOOTS trails, so completion of the, of the plan system. And then neighborhood open space was, was intended, of course, for neighborhood open space. And as Robert indicated, there's been a couple of big purchases made with, with that money. Now, originally, when we started, um, uh, when, when the bond was approved and the money became available, um, we worked with the Open Space Commission at that time, and it was we essentially divided the the funds into uh, the foot side and the open space side, and they were planned together, but really kind of separately in those two categories. And over the years, uh, Robert described some of the some of the acquisitions made with uh, the open space part of it. Uh, on the foot side, over the years, we've acquired a, a whole bunch of different uh, parcels. Uh, typically in the in the form of an easement, so a narrow corridor across a bigger parcel um, intended to support uh, foots trails. And I, I don't have a, a list at some point. We'll have a list of of all the and maybe a map of all the trails that were built with the money from that bond uh, that that purchased acquisition of foots easements. But we don't have that um, available immediately. And we also purchased a couple bigger piece or pieces. Uh, the one I'm thinking of specifically is the hillside that is above Route 66 and kind of below Cherry Hill. So it's it's below all the houses on Cherry Hill, but above the businesses that front Route 66. And I, I forget how many acres are included in, in that acquisition, but it, it definitely supports a, a planned foots trail, uh, but it also provides kind of a open space buffer and, and a visual um, Buffer as well along um, Route 66. Uh, so um, over the course of years, as I mentioned, we acquired a lot of easements with foots trail, but spending the money down from the bond has proved to go kind of slowly. Uh, typically, when we buy an easement for a foot trail, we're not spending a, a ton of money on it, uh, and so we weren't going through the money very quickly. 
Uh, so part of the exercise that we're working on now, and this may be this may be some uh, repetition for you on the commission over the last couple of months, but we're looking for a way to spend the money down a little bit more quickly and and meet the of course the objectives of the bond uh, by uh, some property rights to support foots trails as well as open space that's meaningful to uh, our neighborhoods and the overall open space system. Um, so I will show you um, on this map. Uh, kind of what we've identified. So um, I, I don't know, I hope that's fairly visible. A lot of these parcels, because their easements are kind of thin, so they may not show up real well, but hopefully you can see that. So this is kind of the universe of all the future foots trails um, that we have on the on the foots plan that need acquisition to support their development. Um, and this stretches over a number of years into the future. So we've kind of narrowed that down to include just the trails that we think that we have funding for essentially uh, over the next 20 years. And that funding comes primarily from the transportation sales tax, also known as Prop 419, uh, which provides $29 million for ped and bike improvements over the next 20 years. And for the foots portion of that, we've identified the trails that are our most important, highest priority. And would prioritize acquisition of acquisition of easements for those trails first. So when I turn on an overlay here, um, what shows up in in red now is the um, um, the easements that we've identified for foots trails over the next 20 years. There's another component of that uh, beyond foots trails where we're looking at at acquisition to support future trailheads and future single track trail connections between the foot system and the regional network of um, single track trails. So actually there, there are a handful that fall into that into that last category of single track connectors. Now I'll, I'll just uh, go through a few of the foots trails um, and some of the other ones just for your reference. And this, this may be a little bit interesting, but it, we'll try to do the best we can. So one of the, one of the bigger ones is, is this one, uh, which is across Little America property and supports the Fox Glen Trail uh, Foots Trail. A couple other ones are uh, Marshall Trail between Fort Valley Road and Benito um, to the north of the high school and, and Marshall Elementary. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead. I think it might help if I turn on. I'm worried about the map getting a little bit too busy, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on planned and existing Foots Trail. So you can see that this acquisition would support that trail that connects Karen Cooper to the Fort Valley Trail um, in the vicinity of of um, those schools. Uh, closer to downtown, we have a couple of acquisitions that are associated with the extension of the Route 66 trail and the Florence Walnut underpass. Um, moving over, this is the sawmill area. Uh, there's a, a housing complex that's being built here now. They are building part of a foots trail for us and we need a acquisition of a across a, of an easement across a couple parcels to continue that trail down to the Sinclair wash and to connect this trail under construction um, with this existing trail kind of through that wash area. Uh, just one other one that I'll highlight. And again, these are these are fairly small acquisitions. They're not um, real big, uh, but we would like to connect the future Lone Tree Foots um, over to the NEU campus via Hoskins and Mountain View. So um, across a corner of the cemetery, which is located here, and, and we need a couple of easements across a few parcels to make that to make that connection work. So there are a few others like that, but you kind of get an idea. A lot of these are are uh, not long corridors, but just pieces here and there uh, to support foots that we have planned over the next 20 years. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, acquisition for single track connectors because I think that would be of interest to to this commission. And I'm going to turn on what we have planned here. Uh, sing single track connectors are are essentially single track trails that provide connectivity, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned just, just a minute ago, but between the foot system and um, regional trails. In a lot of cases, they're planned as foots, but if we wait for them to be built as foots, it may be a while because that would be much more expensive and time consuming um, to do. But if we build them as single track trails, it could be done fairly quickly. 
In fact, a lot of trails could be built even with um, volunteer labor, for example, on on trail work days. So there's a there's a, a much better chance of them being implemented sooner. And because they connect foots to regional single track, they don't necessarily have to be a, to built to a foot standard. It may work perfectly well to have them built as single track trails. Um, but a few of the ones that we're looking at, there's a couple here on the east that uh, will help provide connections that are part of the Flagstaff Loop Trail. So here, this is along Woody Mountain Road. Um, this one is on the east side of Flag Ranch Road. Um, this trail is existing, this trail is being built. And so if we can get a trail connection out to Flag Ranch, that will kind of make a more of a complete system. Uh, this trail here along the, the dotted line is, is built already. Uh, we haven't updated it yet, uh, but if we can get an easement across this narrow piece of property to the south, we can connect to the existing foots trail. I, I'm sorry, the existing loop trail um, and make that connection complete all the way through here and down to Fort Todd Hill. Uh, a couple other ones along a similar line. Now the map has really become too busy and I apologize for that, but from Route 66 out to Picture Canyon, there's an opportunity for us to connect a trail. Um, we have uh, some of the easements in there already. There's kind of a natural alignment for a trail, uh, but we're looking at acquiring this piece of state land that corresponds to the, to the floodplain and that big bend um, that's just north of Route 66 uh, along the Rio de Flag. Uh, a couple other ones, this one would, would connect from Continental Park to the Campbell Mesa Trail system. Um, and again, it, it, would, it would be served, that function would be served nicely by a single track trail. It doesn't necessarily have to be a complete foots. Um, here, this connection, uh, would provide access from the Fox Glen area um, out to this state land and, and to the forest road that goes out to um, Fisher Point uh, and the Loop Trail and the Arizona Trail. So here we just really need um, a small connection across a corner of some private lots and maybe a connection across a piece of um, state land. And then the last one I'll mention is uh, we refer to as the Elks Lodge Trail. Many of you are familiar with that. Uh, it connects essentially from the, the neighborhood north of the hospital, uh, close to where the Elks Lodge is, all the way out to the Schultz Pass Y Trailhead. Uh, there's been a social trail there for years. The city is working on extending a water line. Uh, part of that water line project may include a, a trail easement. Um, kind of along the alignment of, of where that social trail goes now. So a really valuable connection, and this would be, this is kind of our opportunity to make it uh, a permanent, give us permanent property rights and make a permanent connection. And then the last one I'll talk about is um, related to the Schultz Pass Y, and it's the south end of that private parcel where people park now, uh, but we have money included uh, in this plan for acquisition of that to allow future expansion of, or construction of that trailhead and a way to make it official. Um, so just a little bit of information about moving forward. Uh, ultimately, we need to get an ordinance approved by council. Uh, any acquisition that's undertaken by the city has to have council approval. Um, so we can, if we have an, an ordinance authorizing acquisition of these parcels, we can start to contact property owners um, and begin the acquisition process with them. So we are working on finalizing the, the uh, some of the cost estimates in the list. Uh, we're going through internal review of, of some of the properties just to make sure there are no uh, conflicts with other departments or other plans. And as part of that, we're looking for a recommendation from Open Space Commission uh, for our acquisition plan to um, uh, present that to council as well as, as having um, the Open Space Commission's blessing. So I'll, I'll stop there, uh, turn it back over either to Robert for further information or to the um, to the commission if you have any uh, questions or comments for me. Robert, do you have anything to add before we talk about this as a commission? Well, I just want to thank Martin for all the work that he's put into this. It, it really does entail a lot of detailed work. Um, 
And I don't think I have too much more to add. You know, the, the, the priorities that the commission reviewed uh, last year, as far as like uh, the John Wesley Powell connector and the, what we call the Continental 1 to Fort Tothill and the towns of Winona, are included in the priorities in that in that list that Martin was referring to. So, um, so yeah, I think that the the work that the commission has already put in to this is still contained within that list that Martin was referring to. Okay. All right, commissioners, anyone want to make any comments or ask any questions? Uh, I don't hear or see anything. Um, Martin, I, I have I do have one question um, just for my information. I, I did look at the ordinance, the original one, the two, 2009-41. And in that ordinance, it states that the FOOTS master plan is developed by the FMPO and the community design sec section and is overseen by the Beautification and Public Arts Commission. Is that still the case? And I just <laughs> don't know that. Uh, that that was um, that was a bit of a previous arrangement when when my position was um, half in the FMPO and half in the city. Um, so part of what what the FMPO half did was was planning services for the city. For the foot system, I, I'm I'm full time for the city now. This position is so that that no longer applies. Um, also, at the time, um, open space was part of beautification and public art, and it of course no longer is. It's within parks and recreation. So some some of those things refer to old arrangements that right. have changed. So we're uh, being asked to you know put our blessings on on the ordinance changes um, to that ordinance is you know or is that has that changed or is that still going to be in the ordinance uh that will change we, we do not have a have a draft ordinance yet but when that when we do write it it will be that will be changed to reflect that, current that will be corrected in the new yeah. new ordinance okay right just just wondering so robert um you're looking for a, a motion then from the commission to accept the proposed ordinance changes? Yeah, if the commission is interested in making a recommendation for city council um, to accept the changes that, that Martin has helped us put together for the expenditures of the 2004 bond fund, um, I think that that would, would speak volumes. Uh, we will be also um, going to property and development with these proposed changes, as Martin indicated, to make sure there's no other um, constraints on on the priorities that have been uh, laid out. Okay. All right. Um, commission, is there any comments? I, I do have a possible motion, but is there any comments before I make that motion? This is Commissioner Burton. I just have a, a question um, for Robert uh, or Martin. Um, would uh, would these possible acquisitions uh, exa exhaust the rest of that bond, or would uh, what does that look like? Well, I, I think maybe Martin can probably address this better than I can. But the we wouldn't be able to secure all of those that Martin mentioned. I think actually. We're looking at one of the potential priorities that the commission talked about um, previously, and then some FOOTS acquisitions as well. Martin, do you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, Commissioner Burton, the, the idea is to spend on the, re the remaining remainder of those funds, a little over $2 million. Like, like Robert said, we have more identified than we can probably acquire with $2 million, but um, to some extent, that's OK. We, we prioritize the ones that we want to acquire first and work on those first. But at, at some point, we'll hit, um, you know, we won't be successful. We'll hit dead ends. We'll have to move on to other parcels. So having having a good list of priorities allows us to do that. Gotcha. OK, so it'll, it'll essentially bring that bond to to a close. 
However yes. that works. <laughs> Great. Spend every last cent of it. All right. Anyone else? Uh, if if anyone in the city of Flags, this is Andy. Uh, if anyone in the city of Flagstaff can spend money wisely, I think it's Martin. So I, <laughs> this is a great list. I I uh, support this recommendation. All right. All right. And, and I just have a quick question, Martin. When you mentioned about the Schultz Y, um, I know that that came before council. You know, at, in the past, and they weren't really interested in in doing anything with that. Has that changed? Uh, Chair Wilson, I, I, I can't say if 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 council's um, thoughts about it have have changed or not. OK, I, I think but it's still on our list. To, it's still on our list. I think at some point they'll have to review it again. OK, I, I know from uh, the conversation they had at the time, some of the relevant considerations were um, whether or not we had money to acquire the property, um, how close we were to connecting trails on the city side to it uh, to kind of make it a full service trailhead. Um, and then, you know, how and then how it kind of fit into our overall plans for uh, that area for the trails on the forest service side and for the trail connections on the city side. And I, I think that a lot of progress has been made on on all those fronts. So it, it feels like it's a little bit different situation, and, okay. and I, I think we're comfortable preparing it, presenting it to the council again, uh, and and having them weigh in on in on it, given the um, what's happened since they considered it last. All right, that sounds that sounds good. That answers my question. Um, so, without any more comments, I I will make a motion, and and we will. Um, see where it goes from there. Um, I move that the Open Spaces Commission accepts the proposed ordinance changes for ordinance number 2009-41, the title of which is an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of neighborhood open space and those urban trail easements necessary for the extension of the Flagstaff urban trail system and recommends that the city council review and potentially approve an updated ordinance allowing staff to move forward in accordance with the staff findings. So is there any comments on the motion? If not, we'll take a vote. All right, do I hear a motion? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, this is Andy. I'll, I'll uh, second the motion. I don't think anyone seconded. Is that right? Nobody's um, made. Okay, made a motion to approve. Okay, and you will like to second it. Correct. All right. Sounds good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion is approved. Thank you, Martin and Robert, on this. Yes, I, I'm i just in closing. I, I do want to thank Martin uh, for his hard work in, in making Flagstaff a more walkable city, a more rideable city. Uh, it's, it's tough work, I know, and uh, this is going to help, uh, hopefully, the next few generations uh, keep, keep that going. So thanks. Thanks for that, Andy. Um, all right, so we're moving on then to item D, McMillan Mesa rezone application update. This uh, is an, an item that's for informational discussion and a decision. So Robert. Thanks commissioners. Uh, yes, uh, I'll be quick here. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing was completed in January 12th. Uh, the approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission for a recommendation to City Council was unanimous, and that was presented to City Council. The public hearing and first ordinance read via by the City Council was completed um, Tuesday, February 15th, and that was also approved by City Council unan unanimously. And then the... Um, the final city council 
meeting and second ordinance read is coming up tomorrow at three o'clock. And uh, that will then the, the ordinance will go into um, if approved, the ordinance will go into action, I think 30 days after. And that no. is the totality of my uh, <laughs> my uh, um, <laughs> my update. You can also submit comments, uh, written comments to the public comment at flagstaffaz.com or .gov, excuse me. Um, or you could uh, attend the meeting during the, the the request for public participation if any one is interested. Okay, and any anyone want to have any comments on this? I, I know it's a, a little late for a letter of support, um, but can we provide uh, verbal support as a commission? You certainly could, yeah. Uh, there will be no staff presentation likely because the, the presentation actually took place during the first ordinance read, mm -hmm. but you could register in the public comment and deliver a public comment during um, or after, you know, after the city council calls for public participation. But would it be appropriate as a commission to provide verbal support just in the, you know, in this meeting and, you know, becomes part of the public record? Yeah, if the commission was interested in in providing a public comment. I think it would be appropriate for the commission to make that decision here tonight and to vote on that. And then one of the commission members to essentially log on to the meeting to deliver that comment. Otherwise, the other option would be if you wanted to represent yourself as a citizen and not as a commissioner, you could log on to make that comment just representing yourself. OK. Any feelings within the commission? Mm. Yeah, I believe um, Commissioner Bessler, you spoke to me a little bit about this. Uh, did you have a comment that you wanted to deliver here? Uh, sorry, <clears throat> not at this time, Robert. Okay, thank you. Okay. In that case, we will move on to the next item. Um, given that, uh, hopefully, um, some of the so commission. Actually, before we move on, Commissioner Wilson, if you okay. might ask for a little bit of clarity. So, um, uh, the, at the last meeting, the commission asked me to put this on the agenda as a potential, uh, not only discussion and informational update, but a potential decision for the commission to provide support to um, a supportive comment to city council on the rezone application update. So mm -hmm. um, the open spaces commission is not, at this time, not gonna pursue that, is that correct? I just, would, which is fine. I just wanted to make well, sure. Sorry, yeah, that. sorry, Robert. Um, I had to step away real quick. So you were talking about the uh, rezone uh, City Council meeting tomorrow? Yes, yeah, the, we gave a quick update on the McMillan Mesa rezone application and where we're at and how that this next City Council meeting tomorrow is going to be the uh, the the second ordinance read. Um, yes, I was I was hoping to be there and, and offer a supportive statement. Uh, if that's possible. Basically stating, of course, that uh, you know, the commission uh, supports the rezone uh, application. If you if you but if you speak to it as from the commission perspective, wouldn't we have to um, make a motion to support it? Correct. Then you, unless then you unless could, it's then been you done previously and, and Robert and I were talking, I, I don't think we actually have it in the in the minutes. So if there's consensus to move forward with a motion in support of the McMillan Mesa 
uh, rezone application. I'm, I'm, I'm good with making a, a motion for support. I'll be happy to second. All right. Well, I, I, any other comments before? <laughs> this, this is Marion. I think the, if there is going to be a, a, a comment, it has to be, it has to be an, on an individual basis. Unless the whole, all the commission are going to be present at the meeting. Mm. Do we have to be all have to be present at the meeting or can we speak to a motion that we potentially have, um, you know, a potential of support for the, you know, the rezone. I don't want to do anything that we're not supposed to do, but yeah, yeah we. I, I'm completely happy speaking as a private citizen, but you know, I don't know whether you know it has any weight at all. Well, know. and I guess, sorry to interrupt. This is Andy. I guess my question is, if, if commissions provide uh, recommendations to the city council, is should we mainly do that through the the meetings, obviously, and, and recorded in the minutes? But has a commissioner ever gone to the city council meeting and said, hey, I support what our commission said. Here's here's the reading of the minutes, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, we can do that, but the minutes I don't think is going to be ready before the meeting. Right, so we could just read a general statement saying on this date, the commission met, voted blank to blank to recommend this uh, rezone. Is that right? You, you know, actually, I, I, I'll i defer to Marion on this one. I thought that it could be one representative of the commission if the commission voted on the representation um, here at this meeting. But if, if the, all the commissioners need to be present, I, I actually didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, well, we can do that. But um, like I said, we have to... The minutes is going to be, um, well, we can just, I would have to um, put that in the minutes and then we'll just read the approval. Yeah. So then, Mike, were you planning on going? Because as chair, I think uh, it'd be best coming from you if you're, you're able to make it. Yeah, I was, I'm planning on it. Great. So, um, so yeah, so we're oh, yeah. I, the, the back and forth kind of, I lost track a little bit, but, um, could, could maybe we make, uh, could we restate the motion okay. for the record? Okay. Thanks, I, I'll, I'll make a motion for a statement of support then. Um, I move that op the open space commission, open spaces commission make a public statement formally support the, the mcmillan mesa um, rezone application uh, known as city of flagstaff ordinance 2022-03 that is before the city before the flagstaff city council on tuesday march 1st the, the commission believes it is important that the council knows that the commission supports this vital piece of legislation that will enhance and formalize the protection of these important parcels. Any comments regarding that motion? All right. Um, do I hear a second? Uh, this is uh, Andy again. I will second. All right. Uh, so we have. Um, a second. Uh, so all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Hearing none, the motion is approved. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Um, yeah, so I will plan on being there and uh, Anyone else who would like to show up and so show support would be more than welcome. 
You bet. And uh, Mike, just to be clear, I will be speaking as an individual and, and not as a commissioner member. So I'll uh, make that clear, Robert. Great. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. All right. So we're down to item E, the land acknowledgement statement. So this uh, is an item for all of us. Um, Yes, it is. So the yeah, the commission requested uh, at one of our last meetings to consider the the land acknowledgement statement that city council approved and uh, reads prior to their meetings. And so I'll go ahead and read that statement. The Flagstaff City Council humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of this area's indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands still inhabited by native descendants Border mountains sacred to indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued cont contributions. We celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. And so the question on today's agenda is if the, uh, the commission would like to take this as a part of their own agenda um, for future, for future uh, meetings. All right, and and from the statement that you you read, I would assume that we would replace this, you know, city council with Flagstaff Open Spaces Commission. Yes, that is correct. But okay. we would keep the statement identical. But the rest of the statement would stay the same. Okay. Any discussion or comments on on this on item? This item. Yeah, this is a <clears throat> this is Andy. I guess I would like just to state that uh, a land acknowledgement is important, uh, obviously for all of the indigenous uh, nations of this country. Five hundred seventy-four federally recognized tribes around the, the nation. Uh, I think as a whole, we're acknowledging that history, that uh, connection that the tribes have with lands all around the country. Uh, Flagstaff, I'm, I'm glad, is, is part of that process. Uh, but I think we need to go further than land acknowledgements. And I'm not really sure what that looks like, obviously. Uh, but I think it's important. And I totally support this effort. Um, just wanted to put in my two cents. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Make, want to make comments before we um, make a motion to accept the land acknowledgement statement? Yes, yeah, Jim Burton. I, I just like to. I like what Andy said, and um, uh, the land acknowledgement. It just seems maybe a little um, formal or legalese or whatnot, but I, I think it's important to recognize that. You know, we're now stewards of these lands and that um, and that, you know, we have some pretty, uh, you know, culturally significant sites um, and particularly picture Canyon um, that we are the, the land stewards of. And uh, I think it's important to, you know, to state that, you know, we're here to, you know, steward the land. So I, I don't know if just adopting that one in whole, or like Andy said, if we can maybe, um, you know, maybe make it more personalized, you know, from the open spaces commission and, and what we're, you know, what our duties are. So that's my input. All right. Um, Mr. Burton, I appreciate your input. I just wanted to add a quick comment that we did le run this by our legal team and they approved the commission to to use this statement, but only as is. I believe a lot of work went into the development of this statement and included a lot of input. And so they would rather the commission accept it as is or or maybe choose not to do it. One of the two. Gotcha. So I nailed it with the legalese part. <laughs> Copy that. Well, you know, as, since since we do have the vice mayor on the call, I think it is an important topic uh, to think about down the road. Uh, 
you know, I, I, I work a lot with tribes around the country, and I know that uh, there are at least 22 tribes that have a significance uh, of their culture, their tradition to these lands that we live on. Uh, and honestly, my favorite little story, this will just take a second, uh, Chair, so please indulge me. The uh, Sierra Sanagua is, of course, what the Spanish called this area, uh, the, the mountains without water. Uh, and the Zuni's name is, uh, I'll try to get this right, it's Sunha Kebachi Yalne, or the mountain with the volcanic water caches. And so the Zunis had the, the knowledge to know that, oh, there's actually aquifers under this mountain, there's springs, if you know where to look. <laughs> and uh, I always get a kick out of that, that the Spanish came and just didn't really get it. Um, so I always like that story. Thank you. All right. Um, anyone else? All right. Um, all right. Uh, I guess we'll go on to a motion. Do I have a motion to accept the land acknowledgement statement as was discussed to be read at Open Spaces Commission's meetings? Uh, this is uh, Vice Chair Besser. I'm happy to motion. All right. And a second. I'll second that motion. And is Commissioner Loseth? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you, everyone. Um, and we move on. We don't have a lot of time left, Robert, but we'll move on to the passive recreation definition. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Um, I think we're gonna need at least 10 minutes to discuss this agenda item. Uh, if we don't get that through, I think what we should do is just bump this agenda item to the next agenda if that is acceptable. But I would certainly start on, on it. So mm -hmm. um, my goal is to just define passive recreation to provide an overview of, of what activities are appropriate in open space um, and other types of, of passive recreation areas. So I'm just going to start by reading the zoning code definition for passive recreation for the city of Flagstaff. And that's the use of land and its uh, um, substantiates natural or restored natural area for the preservation of wildlife, the environment and recreational purposes that requires minimal development, including park and ranger facilities, facilities for picnics, pavilions, multi-use trails and paths, canoeing, fishing, educational facilities that promote the education or preservation of such lands, etc and related support accessories, accessory uses such as parking, restrooms, and areas for health and well-being of the public. Passive recreation does not include the use of recreational motorized vehicles except when authorized by law, permitted, or license granted by the city, state, or federal government. Um, and so that is the definition for passive recreation according to our city code. And, uh, and then I just have a few other points kind of on passive recreation. Uh, our management plan, our legally designated open space management plan that provides direction for the management of our four main properties um, does have overall management goals that we hope to achieve for all of our properties. And one of those goals is to provide opportunities for public use of these properties through passive recreation. And so our management plan also does spell out that our mission is to maintain these open space properties for passive recreation. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> lost my place there. So uh, legally designated open space properties are open for varying levels of public use. In general, these properties are managed to provide uh, passive outdoor recreation and educational opportunities. And that includes things like hiking, snowshoeing, wildlife watching, night sky viewing, natural study, and that sort of thing. These uh, properties are closed to overnight use and motorized tra travel. Um, and so uh, that also is a statement that's out of our legally designated open space management plan. In addition to those documents, the Arizona State Park also holds conservation easements for two of our properties. And those 
conservation easements spell out that they are allowed, we, we can allow passive recreation um, and it requires reasonable public access for that passive recreation. And so that also is a limitation of the conservation easement. The, um, the easements do outline improvements and development limitations associated with the preserves to ensure that the public that the properties are retained in condition reflected in the baseline documentation in the grant application and restricts the uses of the property essentially to passive recreational uses. In current zoning, public open space also allows for passive recreation. Um, passive recreation, uh, rec recreational areas generally uh, an undeveloped space or environmentally sensitive area that requires minimal development. These areas are typically maintained areas for the health and well-being of the public and for the preservation of wildlife in the environment. The quality of the environment and its naturalness of an area is the focus of the recreational experience in the passive recreational area. And so again, some, some other ideas for passive recreation would include informal play, picnicking and social activities, walking, jogging, bicycling, snowshoeing, wildlife viewing, and other things that don't require um, specific infrastructure for just one particular activity. Uh, minimal site amenities that, that we believe that would support such activities would include things like restrooms, paths and trails, benches, pedestrian bridges, directional or interpretive signage. And so one additional kind of difference between passive recreation and active recreation is just the difference between what you see in a city park. So ball fields, um, playgrounds, other infrastructure that would support one particular type of activity. So hopefully um, that addresses some of those questions that as a commission we had at a previous meeting. And I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you. That, that gives us uh, a good foundation and background on the difference between passive and active. So I appreciate that. Um, any anyone else um, want to chime in on that one? Um, if it's okay, if it's okay with the commission, I would like to skip the Greater Observatory Mesa Trail Plan update um, for right now. Maybe we could have an update next time and go to the reports and updates um, since the vice mayor is here. Um, do we have a an update from the vice mayor? Nothing from me this evening. All right, thank you. Um, about the uh, McMillan Mesa celebration update. Any any new? Sure, um, I'm happy to get that started. Uh, we're still working with uh, Friends of Flagstaff's future uh, and working on getting an application in for uh, the Buffalo Park Ramada. Uh, and it's been a little delayed, but uh, we're still moving forward. Uh, so Robert, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think that, you know, um, as long as everything goes well with uh, our city council meeting agenda item tomorrow, uh, we're on track to complete our rezone and the ordinance uh, will go into effect 30 days after approval. Um, and then, yeah, we have another meeting set up uh, to discuss the celebration that the commission has been chatting about. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, for next month's meeting, we'll have a draft agenda of the day laid out with safety, public safety, all this, you know, hopefully COVID numbers will be down and we, we won't have to worry about it since it's outside. Uh, but uh, Sylvia with the open space program is, is working on getting some service outings for the day, uh, you know, public event. Uh, so need a little infrastructure, uh, but hopefully not much. Um, just really trying to scale how much how simple it will be uh, with our partners. Thank you, Commissioner. 
Um, and item C under reports and updates, the open space management report. Is there anything that you want to bring to the attention of the commission, Robert? Thanks, Commissioner Wilson. So um, I'll just go ahead and refer the commissioners to those reports. If you take a look at your agenda packet, there is a report for both December and January about some of the achievements of the programs. The only thing I really think it's pertinent to mention is the Picture Canyon Working Group, um, which is an advocacy group for the, the Picture Canyon Preserve, uh, has been interested in realigning one of the trails that follows the pipeline road um, that Kinder Morgan has the easement to through the preserve. And they've wanted to realign it for quite some time to a natural, a more natural experience. And uh, so much so that they, they have done some um, fundraising and they've raised $1,500 to uh, pay for an initial um, proposal of that alignment. And so at some point in the future, that is a proposal that they will ask our program and ask the commission to review. So just wanted to let you know that that will be something that you'll see in a future agenda. Okay. So, all right, that sounds good. So we'll see that in a, in a, in a future agenda item then. Yeah, but probably not for a few months. This is something oh. that's gonna be taking place probably over the summer. And we'll have to find a, a way out to support the request because it's also going to need archaeological survey to go with the alignment proposal. Okay. All right. Um, informational items to and from commissioners and staff. Anyone have anything tonight? Hey, hey this is Commissioner Burton. I just had okay. one question for Robert. Um, has the city um, determined or had any discussions as far as um, having commission meetings back in person? I haven't seen an update on that uh, in the last week or two. I'm, I'll look into that and I'll get back to you, Commissioner Burton. Thanks for uh, that. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, I also did have one other two in front item um, pre at a previous commission a meeting, I think there was a request for an update on our fuels management. And I did include some information in the packet that I sent you. And so I did want to check to see if the commissioners had any additional questions on that topic or would like to receive an in-person presentation if, if they thought that was necessary. Hey, Robert, this is Commissioner Burton. I think I requested that and uh, that just uh, I think intermittent updates is just really good to know what the you know what that what works going on and and how things are progressing with um, you know different restoration areas. OK, sounds good. Well, we'll, we'll leave it at that then and uh, we'll try to provide you all with another update later on uh, this year. All right, that sounds sounds good. Um, so last item here, other before adjournment, um, the future agenda items. Um, the next meeting is March 28th, 2022, 4 to 6 p.m. And is there anything you want to say about any of these items, Robert, or just? No, I don't think so. These are just some items that uh, we've identified prior to, that will be on a future agenda. Um, not potentially the next one in March, but further down the road. And, and then if the commission has anything they'd like to see in a future agenda, as always, let us know. I'm happy to try to arrange that. All right. Sounds good. Uh, seeing as how we're out of time, actually run over a few minutes. Um, do I, the next item is uh, adjournment. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, this is Andy. I'll motion to adjourn. Is there a second? This is Commissioner Burton seconds. All right. That sounds good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. All right. Thanks. Uh, take care. Have a good Thanks evening. Take care. Accomplished tonight.
Thank you.